Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 22 of the Yacking Podcast. We talk about life, business, and more, and we bring you tips and ideas for a changing world, and the world is really changing at the moment. So we have another interesting guest for you today, and we've got to congratulate him because he's our first international guest from outside of North America. But before I introduce him, I'm going to keep you in suspense for a moment longer and first welcome my co-host Kathleen down there in Kitchener. Morning, Kathleen. It's morning for us. How are you enjoying the hot weather today? definitely a, a bad we're going to enjoy it so thank you everybody for joining us again we so appreciate you tuning in and yes we have another wonderful guest with us today his name is freddie van rensberg um and he's from africa he'll tell us a little bit more about himself in um uh, right now freddie welcome please tell our viewers and listeners a little bit more about yourself thank you very much thank you for having me on your podcast it's very exciting i am so jealous I I don't do cold, and I it's beautiful weather in Cape Town. Rainy and it's cold. <laughs> winter arrived. Winter arrived yesterday. But when we say it's cold, I think it's kind of for twelve degrees. So it's not it's not too bad. But for us, that is that. That is how cold it is on one under because this is where the heat is. Um, so I'm definitely jealous. So who am I? It's such a difficult question. Right. Um, I am a 53-year-old um, human being of the male species. <laughs> and um, I suppose I wonder if that's debatable because we're also actually gay. And I am married to a wonderful 49-year-old professor from the University of Stellenbosch in computer science. So we are, we are an interesting couple. He is completely non-human. It's all zeros and ones. <laughs> and I am all, all, all about the human side. I don't understand numbers at all. <laughs> so um, we, 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 meet in, we, we meet in an interesting, interesting space. I work as a, um, my formal designation is a, I must always read it from the certificate on the wall is a um, specialist wellness counselor and an, an, an addictions counselor. And I qualified about four years ago. So I've been working for myself from home the last three years. And I am thoroughly enjoying life. I also host my own podcast called Meet Me in the Field, where I talk to people about their spiritual journeys. And then I also write books. That's the other thing I do. <laughs> so I hope that that's enough about me. Well, we're going to get some more out of you in a minute as we go through, because I think our, our listeners are going to find it very interesting. And it, and if my experience is anything to go by, they're going to be fascinated by your accent, because uh, I, I do a fair bit of public speaking, and people say, oh, we just love your accent. We don't hear it much in North America. So uh, you could have a whole new fan club from this interview, let me tell you. Oh, Freddie, awesome. be, before we get into more about what you do, you I know that you studied at UNISA. and. Yes. I remember from my time in South Africa in the 70s and 80s, I'm sure I read that at that time, UNISA was the biggest remote, we wasn't a term used then, correspondence um, university yes. in the world. Is that right? That's my understanding as well. And you got me thinking about it. And apparently one of the biggest reasons why UNISA had such a huge student number was that a lot of, of people who were doing compulsory military service were studying through UNISA at, at, at that uh, stage. So they right. nearly had kind of a, a, a sitting duck um, audience or, or a sitting duck group, group of students. Right. And that, that's, that's something I heard at that stage, but I'm not sure if, it, if it's 100% true. But that, apparently at the moment, they have something like 400,000 enrolled students from something like 130 countries. Yeah. And it's one of the mega universities. So, so, so they're really a huge organization. Yeah. Yeah. But I did my, my, my first two degrees I did through, through a, a Rand Afrikaans University. Right. That, that is now called University of Johannesburg. Uh-huh. UJ. Yes. 
Okay, okay. And I, thought, I find it interesting that UNISA, with all the problems that South Africa had at the time, right, sanctions and embargoes and all that, and before the days of the internet, they were able to build that huge and successful yes. um, system. And even then, they had many stu- thousands of students from all over the world. That was interesting. Great. It would be interesting to, to see how UNISA kept the postal services going. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> because now with the internet, the, the postal service is falling apart and falling apart. because you need to keep them alive. <laughs> yeah, I know that um, Kathleen has got something she really wants to ask you. I'm going to let her take over for a minute. Oh. No, I, uh, that's fine. Thank you, Peter. So, so Freddie, um, we are under you know some, certain uh, restrictions here in Canada. How are yes. the restrictions been where you are? Has there been a lot of lockdown? Yes, South Africa was under level five lockdown, which is one of the strictest lockdown regimes we've had in the world, apparently, Mm -hmm. from I think it's the 26th of March, if I'm not mistaken. So we are currently on day, I think it's on like 61 of lockdown. We are currently on level four, yeah, day 60. We're currently on day 60 of lockdown and the, the level has dropped to level four, which means that Very few people are now actually allowed to go to work. Um, There's a few stores that have opened, but they're all very, very limited. And very strange, very strange dynamics in terms of decision-making of what stores can sell. Like one store can open, but they're not allowed to sell flip-flops. They're allowed shoes. They're only allowed to sell T-shirts if you can prove that it's going to be winter wear. (laughs) It's the weirdest, the weirdest stuff. There's no alcohol for sale. There's no cigarettes for sale. Um, so it's really, really weird. So, so we are dealing with an amazingly interesting dynamic of, as a, as a, a counselor who specializes in addiction, I've been quite busy answering a lot of um, questions from journalists who want to, to, to write about this stuff. Sure. And it's really difficult because as, as, as a, I'm an addict myself, so I don't drink. I haven't used any mild mood altering substances for the last 10 years and virtually six months. So um, I don't drink I'd, smoking. I haven't smoked for, for 10 years about. So it's interesting for me to stand on the outside and, and look in and see how people are. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm using inverted commas dependent on alcohol. So people who don't have addiction problems cannot live without a glass of wine at night. And it's really an issue for them. Um, Smokers are struggling, but but the illegal trade in cigarettes are booming. I bet, yeah. yeah. So if, if that was level four lockdown, what did level five lockdown look like? Everybody, everybody at home. Um, we were only allowed to leave our homes if we went to the shop, and that's one person per car. Um, masks on. Um, you, if you sought medical treatment, or if you were essential services going to work. Wow. And you had to have the documents in, in your hand. There's loads of roadblocks. And if you stop, you have to present your, your paperwork and those type of things. Yeah. So, it was wow. So, wow, that, it, that's, <laughs> well, you know, here in Ontario, um, we, the liquor stores are allowed to open. There's long lineups to get into the liquor and the beer stores. Um, so it's interesting how, this is affecting people's psyche too. And so are you seeing, what what are you seeing in terms of mental health with this? Wow, that's really an interesting question. What I'm seeing in my own practice is that lockdown happened or the the lockdown was was announced and we had four days to to prepare. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a, 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 a hectic period of people kind of, Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my God, what, what's going to happen? And then lockdown happens. And then a week into lockdown, people get into their rhythm and okay, it's not so bad. And there was a, a very interesting phase of, I can do this. It's actually quite cool because suddenly the world went quiet. I, I for instance, switched off my phone, my phone tones because it's quiet. I, I, I don't want it. I don't want to hear this constant beeping and, and, and things. And, suddenly people didn't have to jump in cars and drive places. So, so they, they, their pace slowed down a little bit. Their 
people couldn't go out to exercise. So people started exercising at home. People who couldn't work started doing online courses. So it was a very interesting, let's use this phase to, to, to develop, to go inside, to, to seek, to, to find answers. And then suddenly about two weeks ago, it was today's Tuesday. So it was Monday, two weeks ago. It was as if, um, am I allowed to say a swear word? Just yeah. a small one. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was as if that weekend, a uh, kind of fuck the shit switch went off. <laughs> yeah. And, and suddenly from two Mondays ago, every person I spoke to was really struggling. Kind yeah. of, I can't do this any longer. This is now too much. They've, they've lost hope. They, it, 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 it turned really, really bad. And that, and already there was an energy in the world that was extremely anxious, fearful, stressful, um, mourning. There was a huge mourning in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's as if that everything just got too much and it collapsed onto people. So people are struggling at the moment. We really are struggling. Well, we're yeah. seeing um, an upsurge in suicides, of course, and depression. Mm -hmm. um, because of we this. are looking at, at our, our, our suicide lines. Calls have increased terribly. Our um, domestic violence mm -hmm. call lines have increased terribly as well. Yeah. Very, very much so. Same here. Same here. We, as Kathleen said, we, we were not as hard hit as you. And I personally, I'm really lucky. I've worked from home for 10 years. I live on a farm, so I can walk down a country road without seeing a person or a car. And because I'm an extradition and ex South African, I'm an awkward bastard. So whatever the government says, I said I've got to disbelieve that. You know, on principle, they're lying. So <laughs> I've been making myself really unpopular on social media. But the facts are that this disease is nowhere near what the experts said at the start. So I don't believe the damage to the economy and people's health and mental health is is justified. But anyway, enough about that. So I've carried my life on my life very really much the same. My wow. My yes, good lady partner has a lot more um, tolerance than me, so she goes and stands in line six meters apart to get into a supermarket, mm -hmm. um, and I just do my own thing and walk. Anyway, that, that's that. My, my concern for Africa is, my, I have a son back in Zimbabwe, is we know that many of the black people can't buy a month's groceries. They, they oh. live day to day, oh. 24 hours. They, they have to go, I use the term advisedly, oh. scavenge to survive today. Yes. How are those poor guys surviving, Freddie? Or oh, Peter, that is you are you are bringing up something that makes me so sad. When the, the lockdown was was declared, I said to my husband, "I am so grateful that this is happening because my biggest worry is 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 if the virus got into our informal settlements, mm -hmm. because there people live six in in in, in, of a, in a four in in a two by two three by three hut type of shack yeah and and they live very very close to each other which turned out that I, I i shouldn't really have been grateful for it because they they actually couldn't do lockdown it's nearly as if no. we we ended up having two sets of rules right one for the suburbs and 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 and, and one for 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 the informal settlements because they they could not live no. by by the rules how no. can you live a family of six in a in a three by three shack yeah, 24 on. hours a day when nobody's working. Yeah. So the, the, the food parcel distribution places, NGOs and, and those places have been so busy. We've been inundated with calls for help, calls for donation, I'm calls sure. for whatever. Just everybody help. And then there, there were the weirdest, again, rules that governments kind of suddenly said that um, they are the only people who can distribute food parcels. Yeah, and I read was, that. But you're not getting the food parcels to the people, and the people are, are hungry. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was just the weirdest, weirdest thing. And my understanding is that that the NGOs just kept on giving food parcels, whether they're allowed or not, kind of come and arrest us. Of course, you, yeah, you can't yeah. let people stop. Freddie, um, get back to something um, that I wanted to ask you. Uh, <clears throat> when I moved from when I lived in South Africa and Rhodesia, I I, I felt and maybe wrongly that. Yeah, alcohol was a problem for a lot of people. Alcohol, we knew of alcoholics and people, and even when I did my military service, I drank more than I should have done. But fortunately, when I finished the army, boom, and now I go months, I don't have booze in the house and I'll go months without drinking because it's just not important. No. But <laughs> Are you human? <laughs> yeah. 
But as far as drugs went, you know, I, I knew of a couple of guys or people who smoked Dacha, which is marijuana, whereas Dacha was yeah. our South African name. But it, it wasn't a major issue. And in my growing up years, hard drugs were just not heard of. So now I come to North America and I think all over the world, we see this huge drug issue. Is it really a lot worse than it has been or is it just a lot more noticeable and accept, not accepted, but um, dealt with better than it was in the old days? That is such a difficult question to answer, but I'm going to try anyway. I think we're dealing with, with, with a few issues, of which one is that the world is much smaller. Yes. So with, with media, the, the, the knowledge base is far more accessible. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we know a lot more about addiction and be a lot more aware of things like alcoholism, drug addiction, overeating, gambling addiction, gaming addiction, sure. and technology addiction. That's the huge one at this stage. And me as an addictions counselor is shocked about how little there is out there in terms of gaming and what I call screen addiction. Anyway, um, so we're dealing with this increased knowledge base, which raises awareness. And therefore, I think we, we, we see a lot more let's call it addicts out there right. because it, 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 it is so much more there. More but then you're also dealing with, with the whole situation of, I think the world has become more, more life has become more difficult. After the, the, the industrial revolution, so much have, has changed so quickly. Sure. And the, the, the people had had to adapt so quickly to so many, to most, so many things. The, the, the start of, 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 of the, the internet revolution has changed the world so fast that so many people are actually struggling with, to, to, to stay with all the demands. Yeah. And where do people go? If you can't deal with reality, where do you go? That's right. You, you take something that takes you out of reality. So That's we are definitely seeing, seeing an increase of, 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 of an actual increase of people who are addicted to, to whatever and an increased knowledge of addiction, which means people get more help. Right. Right, right. And, and stress is different. Um, we have this argument all the time. We, I don't want to get into politics here, but um, when I left South Africa in 94, I went back to Zimbabwe and uh, was farming, went through that whole farm invasion. And it was really, really ugly. I ended up in jail for a few days. I don't need to go into detail, but you know what I'm talking about. But we, we found we dealt with that stress with anger, but it, it was simple compared to the, the modern day stresses of consumerism and paying credit card, oh, you know, it, I, I suspect that's, uh, that's different and that's why people have trouble. That's yeah. enough for me. I know it's, it's Kathleen's turn. She's got more she wants to ask you. Can I just say one quick thing about sure. addiction anymore is the Afrikaans word is destination standard. What's the English word? Um, notwithstanding. Right. Notwithstanding, yeah. It, yeah, notwithstanding the increased knowledge, the stigma is still not broken. Oh, no. We are still dealing with such a huge stigma, which, which makes asking for help and acknowledging that you have, have a problem still a no no. And in so, fact, so that, the, that's just interesting. And in fact, the, the prevalence of talking about it on social media could increase that stigma when you think about it. Because in the old days, you didn't hear about it. So you weren't, you weren't um, exposed. But now, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I hear you. Kathleen, over to you. So, Freddie, I know on your website, you go into the power of talking. Can you tell ah. our viewers and listeners a little bit about that? I think talking is an amazing, amazing, amazing treatment modality and there's a few reasons for that number one is that have you ever walked with a problem in your head and the minute you started talking with somebody about it you it's two but two different parts of the brain work when you think and when you talk and yes. and when you just think about it i love the term i call it we go into mental masturbation <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, yeah we just kind of it's just this this this, this process um while when we talk about it, it's as if the brain puts the information that is mulling around in the head in a logical, in a, in a, in a logical order where it starts making sense to us. So in that regard, talking helps, but also there's something that, that we call shame dies on exposure. So a lot of the stuff that we deal with in our heads, that we deal with in our lives, that we, that, that we are too ashamed to speak about, 
that also just becomes a, I call that the mushroom treatment. We, 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 we keep the, the problems in our lives, we keep in the dark and we feed it shit and it will absolutely mm-hmm bloom grow beautifully like a mushroom well the minute the minute we expose it it's like putting mushroom in the sun it will it will shrivel up so a lot of the stuff that we walk around in our heads the minute it, it, it comes out of our out of our mouths it also comes out of our heads ah, so yeah. it's a it's a beauty it's a beautiful way to 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 to, to give meaning to give um, um structure to the stuff that's going on on our head. And then if you speak to a counselor, even goes one step or a therapist who goes one step further to connect the dots for you. Um, And I always find it interesting as a counselor, that kind of, how could you not have got connected those two events in your life? It's Mm -hmm. so logical. (laughs) So, so talking therapy in that regard is, is a, is a beautiful and a very easy and very accessible type of therapy. Interesting. Some of, um, the people that you counsel, do they, do, do any of them ever find that by talking about it allows, makes them relive the situation? Yes. That's why they choose to bury it. Yes. How do you deal with, Absolutely. how do you deal with someone like that? That is, you know, they don't, they're, they're not no. talkers. They don't like to open up. And then all of a sudden they're with you and they're opening up and it's just bringing everything to the surface all over again. Yeah, softly, softly, softly. It is, it's the, one of the most important aspects of, of a therapist is to create a safe space for the client. And when, when, when I pick up that the client's moving too fast, wanting to get the stuff out, I would invariably try to slow them down a little bit, pull, pull them back to make sure that I can actually hold them in that space where they are. The last thing I want to do is for a client's emotions to run away um, in this process of, 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 of runaway emotions, say, okay, your 50 minutes is up. I see you next week. Mm. Because I'm, a, I'm, a controlling, I'm also a controlling codependent. So if that client walks mm-hmm. out my door, I freak out because I can't keep that client safe. And I know that he's possibly not, not safe. Whether right. he's going to, to, to use drugs or alcohol or suicide or what that case might be. So what we try and do is we try what we call hold space for that client. Let, let it come out process hold back the rest let it come out and even if the client during that week or that period that you don't see them realize that this possibly wasn't a good idea next week we, we go and pick it up um one of the first rules of, of counseling is they say go and meet your client where your client is and i say absolutely unless the client needs to go somewhere as well and then you help them to go there <laughs> so I, I always say i may be gay but but, but i but i stay a male i am task orientated i want you to leave you with a result <laughs> right so, so I'm, I'm i'm kind of a pushy counselor <laughs> let, 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 let's get it out but, but let's keep you safe interesting freddie you you spent most of your life in johannesburg but you're now in somerset west right yeah what yes. was why did you move down to the lovely cape ah oh, um two things the first move was I was fleeing from a bad relationship. <laughs> I was given the opportunity in 93. That was when, Peter, you'll remember, South Africa had a very unique parliamentary system. Yes. Our, parliament, our parliament sits in, sat in Cape Town for six months of the year, normally the first six months of the year. Yep. And then the whole of parliament split up and all the parliamentarians went to their constituencies all over South Africa. Yep. And then everybody who worked for parliament went back to the different departments. Right. So in 93, I was offered the opportunity to, to work as part of the personal staff of the Director General of Public Works and Land Affairs. Uh-huh. And that meant that I could come down to Cape Town for six months and then back to Pretoria. And in that December, a relationship broke up and it was just one of those things, I, I, I can't. And just as, as I said, I can't, they said to me, do you want to go to Cape Town? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. <laughs> so, so I virtually ran away from, from, a, from, a, from a relationship. Okay. okay. And um, the kind of funny thing about that relationship is that the, my, my partner at that stage was actually a diagnosed schizophrenic. And I always say that I was, I was so codependent that I couldn't see how bad the relationship was, that the schizophrenic right. had to tell me this is not working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> not, not good. And then, so I was in Cape Town for, for, for 93. 
and my soul, the day that I step off the, 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 the airplane, 5th, 5th of January, 1993, my soul said, you're home. And I'm a, I was from Transvaal, and Transvaal yeah. don't like the Western Cape, so That's I right. said to my soul, no, that can't be. And my soul said, yes, you're home. And it, it took me a while to, to, to really listen to my soul. And then in 94, as a white Afrikaans male, I started looking for a job in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, not easy. And I got one. <laughs> you got one. Got <laughs> well, that's why I went. That's why I went back to Zimbabwe because, as a white, yeah. even English-speaking male in '94, there were just no jobs, and I, my yeah. business had gone bust. I had no money, so my only choice was to go back to Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah. it was a tricky I time. I actually got employed by a, a a financial services company. They were okay. a private private portfolio management company, who dealt with a lot of farmers. Ah, because right. they, they they got the the, the Langeberg and the Bonita share, share registers, and they, yep. they they got those farmers who had those shares on board. And they suddenly realised that they don't have one Afrikaans person to li- to liaise with these farmers. Right. And because I had the parliamentary experience, I could I could communicate at that level. Yeah. So I was brought on board with no experience of portfolio management. They asked me in the interview, "Do you know what a portfolio management company does?" And I said, "Yes." Praying by. God, that they don't ask me what they do was like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, good one. All I knew was I wanted to be in Cape and I got the job. <laughs> yeah, Freddie, I've just had a warning that we've got about eight minutes left, so I want to give you a chance um, <clears throat> to sorry, Kathleen. My, sorry, I'm stealing your question, my, but I, while I've my, started, my just, boy is joining. Oh, us. we Kathleen <laughs> has two. I'm surprised we haven't got one of hers, and I have eight <laughs> wandering around here. So my weird. We've got three, um, so. I'm t- I'm stealing Kathleen's question, but while I while I've got you, tell us about your books quickly, and then how people can get hold of you. Oh, cool! So as I said, that I I I entered recovering myself. That I I bring the alphabet. You know, I'm 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 an alcoholic. I'm a drug addict. I use virtually everything. I'm a codependent. I'm a sex addict. Um, so so my life my life was hell, and then in in on the twenty third of November two thousand and nine some of some form of divine intervention happened in my life and I asked for help. And it's really divine intervention because I had no intention of asking for help that day. Um, so I asked for help, got help, went into rehab. And since that day, I've been clean and sober. So I'm so, so, so lucky that I haven't picked up yet. And I got clean using the 12 steps. And I became a complete 12-step junkie. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm an addict, so I possibly got addicted to 12 steps, to AA meetings, to NA meetings, to sex addicts, non meetings, to codependence meetings, to whatever. But it really worked for me. And, and, and it made so much sense because it's a design for living program. So, 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 so it took an amazing set of, 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 of principles, which are all based in spirituality. You know, just be nice. Don't be a poopoo. So <laughs> you will know what poopoo is. Oh, That's yes, awesome. Know right? but, 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 you know, it, it, it's, all about just, <laughs> it's all about just, just be nice. You know, just, just behave yourself. Just um, 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 connect with the world on, 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 a, on a real level. Stop lying. Stop manipulating. Um, let, let's find all those characteristics that, that make you do all this terrible stuff. Get rid of them, and invariably, what we ask people is to find some form of, of higher power. So, I grew up religiously, but but I, I really had problem with 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 the traditional concept of religion because of of of, of um, I felt very judged in the in the mm-hmm. church because of being gay. So, um, I I said to, to to Mother Nature, "Come on, let's be my higher power." So, Mother Nature is nature, and we have an awesome relationship. And what I then realized is is the first book I wrote is called The First Layer. And that comes from a sponsee who constantly kept on relapsing. And he said to me one day at the, at the retreat, kind of, Freddie, I'm so sick of this because I just feel worse about myself because I can't even complete the 12 steps in, in a period of being clean. Write something for me that I can complete the 12 steps in a clean period. So I did it. So I wrote yeah. the first layer. Within 21 days, you can work through the 12 steps. And he's now over four years clean. <laughs> so, um, so it works. Good. So I brought that book out. And then because, because the 12 step is designed for living, we learn how to live life. I, I decided to, to, to write a manual for people who are not addicts to, to learn to live life using something different than suffering. Right. So, so, so that, that's how life and non happened. 
Okay. So now yeah. how, how can people get your books and how can they contact you? I'm speaking. Uh, well, let me ask you a question first. Do, can you only work with people once the lockdown's finished face to face or do you work with people like we're doing now online as well? I, I do all my counseling online at the moment. Okay. So yeah. people all over the world could contact you. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I have given your details to a awesome. lady from South Africa who lives here in Woodstock. So cool. Wonderful. Uh, no, no, I've, I've had clients in, 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 in the UK and in North South, South Korea and Vietnam. Well, so, well done. So, 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 so it's out there. Tell us about your website link. How can people contact so you through people the website? You can find me in, in one of two places. My website is www.freddie, F R E D D I E. Dot org dot za, and then my books you can find in my shop, which is freddyshop.co.za. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. And they're also available on Amazon. Um, Life and Non is, is available in hard copy, and the first layer is available in Kindle form. Okay, that, that's, that's great. We have a couple of minutes. Um, but that's really about the end of our broadcast time. Sorry, Kathleen, for the cats. Kathleen <laughs> uh, have you got any so more to ask Freddie? Uh, Freddie, we really appreciate it. And thank you for uh, tuning in, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time. So this was so awesome. Thank you very, very much for having me. It was You're such welcome. a pleasure.